In this video, let's connect the concept of marginal rate of substitution with the edge word box. And recall that the marginal rate of substitution has something to do with the indifference curve. Namely, it is the slope tangent to a specific point on the indifference curve. Now let's let's stay with our do yellow dot that we had in the previous video. And so uh, have a look here that we have the indifference curves of N. So the orange, the orange one is the indifference curve of N, whereas the purple is the indifference curve of Bill. And if you look from Bill's perspective, it's also this convex shape of the indifference curve. Hope this makes sense. Now let's let's have a look at their respective slopes. So what is the slope? The slope is the change in y over the change in x. And in this case, for n, for instance, if we look at n, the change in y is going to be the change in the food relative to the change in clothing. Let's uh, draw the slope. So at this point over here on the curve, if we draw a slope, it's going to be pretty, pretty steep, pretty vertical. So in that case, the MRS is going to be quite high. So let's for uh, let's give an example. That would be, for instance, four. So the the MRS of n at that point is equal to four. MRS of n at that point is equal to four. Now, what is what is the marginal rate of substitution here? That was the change in y relative to the change in x. So n is giving up some food for one more unit of clothing, and she's giving up. She's giving up. So the change the change in food for n equal over the change of clothing of n is equal to 4. Now with the same logic let's work it out for Bill and then we'll play a bit with the ratios to see what the ratios mean. Uh, so for Bill let's draw the the slope tangent to the point from the Bill's perspective. That would be the tangent to the purple curve which would be something like that which which is quite horizontal meaning it's gonna be flatter. For the sake of the example let's assume that the marginal rate of substitution of Bill is gonna be equal to 2 marginal rate of substitution of bill equals to 2 and by the same logic by the same logic bill is willing to give up some food for one more unit of clothing over here so that's going to be the change in the food of bill relative to the change of clothing for bill now let's do some cross products to see what that means and how trade can work out in this case so if we do a cross product here we can see that 4 times the change in clothing of n equals to the change in food of n and in the case of Bill, we will have that two times the change in clothing of Bill equals to the change in food of Bill. What does that mean? That means that we will have a specific amount of food that's equivalent to a specific amount of clothing so that the ratios are going to be equal. Now, how does that work out? Let's suppose that N is willing to exchange one unit of food. So if she gives up one unit of food, one unit of food of N, how much does it uh, equivalent to? How much is it worth to n in terms of clothing? Well, to have 1 over here, the change in clothing must be 1 over 4, because 1 over 4 times 4 is going to be equal to 1. So that's equivalent to 1 over 4 units of clothing for n. So for n, just 1 over 4 units of clothing is equal to an entire unit of food, because n values clothing more. That's why she's willing to exchange very little of it. That's the intuition. Now let's have a look at, um, at Bill. What, what does it mean for Bill? Well, if, um, if, we, if we use the same logic, if Bill exchanges one unit of food, one unit of food of Bill, that's equivalent to how much? Well, that should be two times one over two. So the change in clothing should be one over two. Bill is willing to exchange a half unit of clothing for one unit of food. And again, Bill also values clo sorry, clothing of Bill, I meant to say. The uh, clothing, Bill also values clothing more than food because he's willing to exchange only a half of it for an entire unit of food. But but he still values it less compared to n because n is only willing to exchange a fourth unit of clothing so for n clothing matters more than for bill that gives an intuition to us that gives us a signal that there should be some room for trade meaning that if we make some exchanges which we will do in a second we will see that we could make a consumer better off and in economics we call this an a Pareto improvement so one consumer can be better off but the, the other one is not hurt is not worse off and that's what we're striving for we're striving to make everyone better off so if we take at least one consumer and make it better off that's already progress so for instance for instance what if what if we exchange this unit of food between them let's see what happens so suppose suppose the following happens n is giving one unit of food to bill so if n is giving one unit of food to bill like that one unit of food Bill only requires 1 over 2 units of clothing in uh, return. So Bill is willing to exchange 1 over 2 units of clothing to N. 
If Bill gives one over two units of clothing to N, look what happens. Look what happens. N is only requiring one over four units of clothing. For N, the food that she gave up is equivalent to one over four units of clothing. But Bill is willing to give her a half unit of clothing. What is a half unit of clothing? A half unit of clothing is equal to one over four unit of clothing plus another one over four unit of clothing. And look where we're going here. N only requires this one, but she gets an extra. And that's the improvement that, we're, that we were speaking. This is our Pareto improvement. N is getting a bit more clothing than she was requiring. Uh, than she was requiring. Why is that the case? Because their valuations are different. Anne values clothing more than Bill, so Bill is willing to give up a bit more clothing to Anne because for him it's not that important. That's as simple as we can say it. For Bill is less important than for Anne, that's why there is room for trade. That's the intuition of uh, exchange. Whoever values something more than someone else, they can trade it so that the person who wants it more gets it because it, it's there. The other person has it and is willing to trade without being worse off for that person for that person it's okay to, to to make the trade because he gets he gets for instance bill gets the food that he's requiring for the half unit of clothing hope this makes sense in the next video we'll see how the concept of edward box relates to companies to firm behavior